the self-worth and burnout arise when we feel undervalued, underappreciated, and underrecognized, just to name a few. I call it the unders, but if you're leading a team and it's sometimes hard to recognize when someone might be feeling undervalued, underrecognized, or underappreciated, but you can tell that they're feeling this way. I call it the overs. So you'll see your employees or someone on your team begin to overcommit. Um, maybe they're committing to too many projects or responsibilities. You might see them overworking. You might see them overthinking, overwhelming, overstressing. Um, that is really an indicator that their self-worth has been rocked and that there is some underlying issues going on or that their self-worth is probably shattered a little. I create clear thinking and decisive leaders who can amplify their influence. Contact me to find out how I can help you or your organization. And today our guest is Becca Power. Hi, Becca. Hi, Judith. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. And you're giggling already, so it's going to be fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell us who you are. So I am a Fortune 500 sales executive. I've been in uh, Fortune 500 for the last 20 years, and I'm also an entrepreneur. I um, own a coaching and consulting firm and it's called Powers Peak Potential. And through that, I do um, motivational speaking. I published my first book, Harness Your Inner CEO. I um, I'm also a mom of four. I have two biological children and two step kids. And my husband and I have been together 13 years. So we've had that. And I kind of share all of that because I'm like, I'm a full plate type of gal. So <laughs> and you get it all done. I do. I do. But I've learned a lot of lessons that you can have success without sacrificing yourself and your well-being in the process. And that's what I love to talk about. Ooh. Excellent. Cool. So how does somebody go around activating their self-worth? So that's a, a really good question. And if you don't mind, I would like to share maybe like a three-minute story to kind of share how I learned that because I, you know, I think most of us learn through an experience, right? <laughs> so there was something that made me realize that I had to start there. Um, so in my career, I have probably experienced burnout maybe four or five times, but um, in 2016, I hit what I call my, my extreme burnout moment where I hit the bathroom floor in complete exhaustion. And some of the things that led me up to that point is I was a, a sales leader. I was working for an organization that had a mantra of putting people first. I, as a leader, when I'm in a leadership role, truly just believe that people need to come before profit. So I have my own ma mantra, people before pro profit. So um, what I've learned about myself and other women specifically and, and leaders and entrepreneurs is that we have uh, a piece of service to us. We want to make an impact. So we find it really easy to put maybe the business or the belief or the um, or the the cause before ourselves. And that's where I found myself. I found myself in so committed to believing I was making a difference that I put this difference before myself. I put it really even before my family. So after three years of, of real, having long 12-hour work days, over committing myself to projects, um, committees, um, even over committing myself to soccer practices and school plays, all the things, right? Um, I found myself at the end of three years um, very with very low capacity and extremely high stress and anxiety. So I came home from work one day after, again, being three years kind of in this state and my kids were in middle school and I remember walking through the door just freaking exhausted and, and quite frankly, relatively aggravated because I had a stressful day. And they walk through, I walk through the door and it's not my proudest moment, Judith, I'll tell you that. But I walk through the door and my kids run up to me with a big smile and they're like, mom, we're so happy to see you. Let me tell you about our day. And my response was, let me put my freaking purse down and give me five minutes. 
And I probably, as a mom, I think we all have frustrated moments where we say something like that. But in this specific moment, everything slowed down for me. It was like just one of those moments in time where I can remember every detail, every feeling, the, you know, the looks on my kids' faces as they shifted from being excited to feeling almost embarrassed and shameful that they approached me at all. You know, and I remember thinking, is this the mom and woman that I want to be? Is this what I'm doing all of this for? And, um, you know, obviously the answer was no. And I started like later that night, I started crying and I fell to the bathroom floor in complete exhaustion. Um, and what I realized and the, my most powerless moment of crying on the bathroom floor is that my self-worth really was non-existent. I was prioritizing everything above myself. And I was so weakened in that state that I barely even had the energy to stand up off the floor. Um, so in my weekend state, I call out to universe, God, whatever uh, if you want to call. It. And I was like, I was like, I need some help. Like I, I, I am out of solutions. I can't do this again. Like I, I can't power through another day and I'm just crying. And almost instantaneously, I call it my instant miracle. I remembered something that a former VP of sales told me about three years earlier. And he had told me that he was very proud of me and that I was the CEO of my life. And so there in my most broken moment, I remembered that I'm the CEO of my life. And it was extremely empowering to the point that it was the catalyst to have me rise off the floor, as I say, a different per a different woman than the one that went down. And um, it was in that moment that I started looking at my self worth quite differently. Great, thank you. So, other than maybe the hours and stuff that you you were working, what else did you do to to make it to to, to really value yourself and get other? Yeah. So yeah, so that's a really great question because I think I like to share the the pain in the story first because it's so relatable to I mean everyone's probably had their bathroom floor moment for different reasons. Um but you know as you think about activating your self-worth and and why that's important and how to do it, you know one of the um lessons that I learned, I want to share the lessons first, and then I'll share like a tip on how to start activating your, your self-worth is that even when there's noble causes, like, um, making differences and, and leading people or growing a business, um, when you prioritize everything above yourself, you're leaving yourself vulnerable for disease, disaster, and dysfunction to enter your life. And by the time I hit the bathroom floor, I pretty much had all of those. I worked myself into two anxiety disorders, um, autoimmune disease, and my most precious relationships were dysfunctional. And so, um, you know, I had to really figure out what my next move was. And I went to bed that night. And the next day, I really just told myself, I have to be willing to prioritize myself first above everything else. Like if saying, saying yes to someone or something makes me say no to myself, to me being healthy and whole and happy, then I have to say no to that thing. So um, that's kind of where it started for me is really just needing to put oxygen on myself first. Mm. Thanks. Now, not a lot of maverick leaders struggle with self-worth issues, but they may be managing people with self-worth issues and are struggling to understand what to do to help those individuals. Do you have a plan for that? Yes, I will. I would. That's a really great question. And I haven't been asked that before. So kudos for asking like a good, a good meaty one. But um you know, one of the things as a leader that in reflection I, I can share and that I do take into my role with me now is um, self-worth issue, low self-worth and burnout arise when we feel undervalued, underappreciated, 
and under recognized, just to name a few. I call it the unders, but if you're leading a team and it's sometimes hard to recognize when someone might be feeling undervalued, underrecognized, or underappreciated, but you can tell that they're feeling this way. I call it the overs. So you'll see your employees or someone on your team begin to overcommit. Um, maybe they're committing to too many projects or responsibilities. You might see them overworking. You might see them overthinking, overwhelming, overstressing. Um, that is really an indicator that their self-worth has been rocked and that there is some underlying issues going on. So the first part to your question is um, if you see your employees overcompensating, um, you might just want to pause and see if there's positive ways you can reinforce them. Brilliant. I, I'm wondering if another is if when you give a compliment, they you need to kick it back. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a case of uh, there's one thing about oh that kind of like oh shucks you know oh you know, it wasn't that great between someone who consistently no matter what they do and what you say damn close yes and so that is it's deflection from them owning their own gifts and talents and values so that is a really you know when when someone's in a constant state of uh, deflection of compliments. And that's also an indicator that their self-worth is probably shattered a little bit. Um, you know, it's really interesting about where we're taking this conversation is I recently saw Oprah speak and, uh, you know, she said that at the end of the day, what people want to know is they want to be, they want to be seen, they want to be heard and they want to feel like they matter. And Unfortunately, especially with women, as it comes to self-worth, a lot of times deep down, deep, deep, deep down, we don't feel like we matter. And so that is the twofold. So as a leader, so I want to just circle back on two of the points we discussed already is that one, as a leader, if you know, that's kind of the, uh, what's going on underneath, you can take some additional steps to make sure they feel seen, heard, and like they matter. And as the individual, just know that's kind of in our, our DNA. And that's why it's so important to prioritize yourself first, to consider yourself before you consider making a decision on something else. How is this going to impact me? Because when you choose you more than once and then more than five times and then more than 10 times, your self-worth increases. And what I've also noticed is when one's self-worth increases, so does their net worth. So I've noticed that there's a correlation between self-worth and net worth as well. Well, it's hard for people to value you if you don't value yourself. And if yes. you're not valuing yourself, you're, you're going to be highlighting it. It's like having the neon sign on your head. It's very clear. Yes. <laughs> yes, Judith. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think also there's sometimes there's a look that people have um, when they when they are in a situation where they have readily had their self worth taken away, yes, which leaves them vulnerable for bad people. To do. Yes, and yes, I think as a leader, it's it's finding the right way to deal with it without actually breaking any boundaries. Because sometimes people are quite defensive. So it's not like you're going to walk in there and go, well, I think you sort yourself up about your self esteem. So, you know, hopefully, no one is that bad that they'll actually go off and say that. But, you know, people can become quite angry if you're trying to support them and they don't think they deserve it. So, therefore, they want the attention. So, therefore, they're very defensive and angry. And if you don't understand that's what's going on, um, you can start reacting in a very negative way. Yes, agreed. And one way I've seen to diffuse that is um, to really focus on someone's strengths because someone who is in that space that you're talking about that is struggling with self-worth that might not even be able to name or validate that that's what's going on within them, right? Because this has been their operating system for a while. They're going to know everything that's wrong with them. 
and they'll be able to tell you about it in great detail. When you ask them what they're good at, they might only be able to, to name one or two or maybe three things, which is fine. But what I have found that as a leader, when I'm seeing someone who might be struggling with self-worth issues is to get them to do more of what they're good at. And that way I can provide some uh, positive reinforcement and some validation that their efforts are impacting the business or that they're helping the team grow or you know, it, it allows me an opportunity to recognize them for what they're good at instead of bringing them into the office for something that they're not good at. It's like they're almost prepared for that conversation and they're not so much. So you, you mentioned about like taking the compliments they are not so much as prepared to have positive conversations about themselves. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. So is it possible for the individual to overcome this or do they always need help and intervention? I, yes. I mean, I, um, you know, one of the things, yes, it's completely 110% possible to overcome it. It takes concentrated effort, just like anything else, um, you know, where your focus goes, energy goes. So if you're really feeling stuck and you want to get out of this place, um, you know, again, the more you start saying yes to yourself and no to other people, places and things, you're, you're going to create space for yourself. And over time, you start to feel more confident. But, you know, for me, and in, in a real life example, what led me up to the point that um, I fell to the bathroom floor is that my self-worth was rock. And even though I came across as a very powerful woman and I was, I was very career, I had a team, I was Fortune 500, all of these things on paper, like major powerhouse inside. And this is what I was meaning inside in the core of me, I had damaged self-worth or lower self-worth. And I was searching for approval, validation, and acceptance from my bosses, my peers, my teammates. And in that search for um, approval, validation, and acceptance outside of myself, I actually um, was disempowering myself in the process. And so once I flipped that script and started validating my own self, like again, like very, a uh, really real example. And this is a kind of a cool moment too, for the listeners of like, for those of us who are service-based and impact-based, this is a cool, a cool thing to take away is in one of the real life examples, which was days after I rose off the bathroom floor, I got asked to participate um, in a project that I knew would overextend me in two seconds. And it was my first opportunity to really say no. So say no to the project so that I could say yes to myself. And I was scared and I was trembling, to be honest. And, but what I knew is my resources and I, I know my people and I'm very passionate and I'm very, um, compassionate too. And so when I got asked to participate in this project and I knew I had to say no, I didn't want to pass on the opportunity without passing it to someone else. And so my no, instead of being like a hard no, looked like, I'm sorry, like I would love to, but my plate's really full. But I know that Jennifer has been wanting to, um, to, you know, to rise up and get her hands into more things. And I think this is a really great opportunity for her. So what ended up happening is not only was I able to say no and say yes to myself, but I also helped someone else rise. And that really satisfied the part of me that likes to help people. And next thing you know, it got easier and easier to do that. And then I really started becoming more of a mentor um, to other women and people in my life. And I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, interesting. Brilliant. Thanks for sharing. I'm wondering. Are you saying or inferring um, that all people pleasers may have self, low self work? Or yes. Oh, right. Interesting. Yes. Yes. Put a bit like that. Yeah, and it and it does. It comes from this place of um, you know everything always comes back to our childhood. I feel like, but. You know, I was um, studying, I got certified in shadow beliefs. And one of the things that I learned as I was studying the shadow and kind of uh, that part of us 
is that there was like five major um, core beliefs at, at the bottom of everybody that are like underlying, right? They're not always conscious, but it's like, I'm not worthy. I'm not lovable. I'm not valuable. I don't matter. I'm not safe. And so those little things are what's running us. And when those really are activated inside us, even if they're unconscious to us, that's when you'll find yourself in people pleasing tendencies. And so, yeah, our self-worth is kind of lowered when we find ourselves in that state. Right. And so for all those listening out there, were you able to give any tips or hints either as the leader with someone self-worth or someone who's got low self-worth that needs to get better? Um, I think I, I can address both at the same time, because sometimes I feel as a leader too, we question, are we making the right decisions or what? So um, I think that as you, uh, as we're looking at, at this through the lens of self-worth, as you start to say yes to yourself, um, which will again, kind of lead you to saying no to other things, When you do that in a way that's empowering to you and empowering to others, like I just shared, your self-worth increases. And in my case, and now I've coached many others on this too, as the self-worth increases, I mentioned this earlier, your net worth increases too. And you'll find yourself in promotions or in new career opportunities or potentially, you know, opening your own business. Um, It creates new paths for you. So whether you're a leader or an individual, it's just really important to give yourself the permission to say yes to yourself. Mm. Brilliant. Thank you for coming on the show, Becca. Yes. Thank you so much for having me, Judith. Awesome conversation. Yes, it's been a right pleasure. And thank you out there for listening to the Maverick Paranormal Podcast. And I hope you have enjoyed listening to my conversation with Becca as much as I enjoyed having it. The Maverick Paradox Magazine. The Maverick Paradox Magazine is for the pathologically curious. Written by a swagger of socialized mavericks who are divergent thinkers, the magazine tackles the biggest issues affecting maverick leaders today. You might be a business owner or a leader within an organization who wants to have your thinking challenged, to be exposed to a diversity of thought, or to learn from diverse experts in their fields. If so, the Maverick Paradox magazine is for you. Join the swagger at themaverickparadox.com and engage in the conversation.